Did you know that there's a part of the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uses a racial slur? In Mark chapter 7, there's the account of the Seraphonician woman, a woman who is Syrian and Greek, both of which there were strong biases against within the Jewish community. And she comes to ask Jesus to heal her daughter who's possessed by a demon. And what is Jesus' response? He says, it's not good for me to give the children's food, meaning the children of Israel's food, to dogs. He calls her a dog. What's amazing about this account is that the woman doesn't back down. She speaks truth to power. She confronts Jesus and says, well, you can think that about me, but even dogs deserve the crumbs from the table. Her boldness and bravery to speak truth to power actually changes Jesus' mind. Jesus repents of his racism and extends healing to this woman's daughter. I love this story because it's a reminder that Jesus is human. He had prejudices and bias, and when confronted with it, he was willing to do his work. And this woman was willing to stand up and speak truth. Uh, that 50 pedophiles were killed today? Um, no. I in this video, a Baptist preacher is saying that he's glad that 50 LGBT people were killed in the Pulse nightclub shooting. He calls them pedophiles, and later he goes on to say this was a blessing because it helps make society safer. If you are a non-affirming Christian, if you are teaching that homosexuality is a sin and that you can't be gay and Christian, this is where your theology leads. It naturally leads to this kind of extreme speech. It naturally leads to these kind of beliefs that it's better for there to be less LGBT people, that LGBT people should be marginalized and even killed. This is the natural fruit of non-affirming teaching. This is what you believe. Jesus says, you shall know the truth by its fruit. This is the fruit that non-affirming teaching bears. It does not bear the fruit of the spirit, but of death. First Corinthians oh, chapter six, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we go again, the NIV version. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. And that word homosexual is dealing with effeminate. All right? Homosex there's, a, there's a kind of notes on the side note. Homosexual, male homosexuals. nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Look at the book of Jude, because homosexuals will try to say that Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed because of their homosexual acts, but they were destroyed because they were not loving and giving. Now look at what the book of Jude says. Jude chapter 1, which is the only chapter, verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains. Under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality, immorality and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Why was Sodom and Gomorrah judged? Because they went after strange they went after strange flesh. So you mean to tell me a Christian can be gay? There's such thing as great Christians, so God destroyed righteous gay people, right? Nonsense. A bunch of nonsense is heresy and what this guy who is a homo, who is a homosexual church leader is trying to do is twist the scriptures and he's leading people to hell and he's doing it through emotional pleas. Okay, people of God, uh, you saw it. 
I mean, this guy is uh, open, you know, obviously he's homosexual uh, and he's apparently some kind of leader, you know, a, a pastor of some church and stuff. So, but when you look at the videos and you look at the blasphemous things that he stated, he basically said that the woman rebuked Jesus Christ because Jesus had bigotry. He was, uh, um, pretty much prejudice. He said that Jesus Christ was prejudiced towards this woman. Now, that is blasphemy. So Jesus Christ, who specifically said, and the word of God says, excuse me, that all things were created through him and by him were all things made. So Jesus Christ is prejudiced towards people that he created, that have been created through him. See, these seducing demon spirits, because of a person's lifestyle that have embraced a lie, the Bible is very clear in Romans chapter one. They, though they were, be, they, they think that they were wise, they became fools by embracing a lie. In Revelation, it says those who practice a lie, those who embrace a lie will be set in Lake of Fire. See, and notice how, and this that, that video was done on uh, Spencer Smith's page, so I'm, I'm giving, you know, credit to him because he's the one that kind of, that I came across that first it, it exposed this stuff, well, really didn't expose, but just put the word up against the nonsense of what this guy was saying. And this is what is happening with a lot of people in that lifestyle, is that they're following other liars. The blind are leading the blind. This guy, he does not stay with the word of God, and he's doing exactly what Satan did. When Satan took the word and twisted it, when Satan tried to tell Jesus, look here, if you throw yourself off this mountain, didn't God say he'll give his angels? You know, his angels will lift you up. But what did Jesus Christ say? No. The, <laughs> Jesus Christ said that you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And didn't Satan try to twist the word of God again? See, that's why the Bible says that Satan masquerades like an angel of light. And no wonder so do the, his ministry, his, his, his ministers of his. These, this guy right there that you just saw, that's one of the ministers of the devil. That's exactly what it is. Because he comes against Jesus Christ. He tries to say, well, Jesus Christ was human and he had to repent. So if Jesus Christ had to repent, then that means his death on the cross was in vain because the Bible says he was the lamb without spot or blemish. He was the perfect sacrifice. He was the perfect lamb slain before the foundations of the world. He was born by the Holy Spirit. He was not born into sin. And the Bible says he knew no sin. OK, he knew no sin. So how in the world does this does this guy who is a liar sit up here and say that Jesus Christ had to repent because the woman corrected him? The, basically, he said the woman was more correct than Jesus Christ was. She was more correct than he was. She had to rebuke him. See, what he's trying to do is paint this picture that Christians are the ones that are wrong and homosexuals are the ones that are right. And so he tries it. What he does is do all this stuff to lie. He's a, he, he's lying and he's deceiving people. And I, I know people have probably went at him on social media and everything, but people of God, you're dealing with a reprobate mindset. That's what you're dealing with. A reprobate whose conscience is seared because he thinks what he is saying and by him getting the applause of other homosexuals and everything. And I'm not even, a, you know, a, a, bashing anything is it's, I'm saying exactly what the scripture says. And so, and so when you have somebody like that, then they don't have the spirit of God in them. So he cannot make any claim about the Holy spirit because he's not living holy. He doesn't have the spirit of God or he wouldn't be twisting the word of God. This is such a clear cut case of what apostasy is of what blasphemy is this is a clear case of what a liar is and what someone looks like that has a seducing deceiving spirit and a doctrine of demons and it came out of this 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 young guy's life 
this young boy's life. And so now he does another video. If he tries to pick out, see what they try to do, they pick out certain pastors that are extremists, like the guy who said that. You know, I didn't see the whole clip of that pastor, but from what I heard, he said, you know, basically what this guy was, was accusing him of was saying that the post club night killings, you know, was 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 uh, was was justified or whatever. All right, now I would definitely. Challenge this guy. What do you have to say about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? Okay, because God dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sexual immorality. They were raping people out in the open in the streets. Homosexuals was. See, this is one of the things that the LGBT don't want to deal with is the history of it. The history of the LGBT is Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities. Those were. I just read the Book of Jews. Those were examples of what God is going. To do and judge people that are in that lifestyle. And so we see the scripture. When I show you the scripture, it you put the word of God up to what these people are saying that are deceiving people and those that are in that lifestyle. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe it's verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but you have been washed. That means that they turned away from that lifestyle. So those, so people in homosexuality, people that are covetous, people that are idolaters. They have a chance to repent and turn away from it, and the Lord can set them free. And for those that want to say that they were born gay, you can be born again. Why not be born again by the Spirit of God and turn away from that? See, a lot of times these people that are in that lifestyle, they're suffering from a spirit of rejection. Because this is where a lot of things where demons attack a womb of the, of the, of the mother because of the rejection that that child faces in the womb. OK, or when a child, you know, when the father wants a boy and the child comes out the girl and the father is disappointed, that child feels that or vice versa. All right. Not only that, but a lot of these people that's in that lifestyle. And I say these people because I'm, I'm saying these people, that's what you that's how you just you just use plain English and stuff because people want to twist that. Or why do you call them these people? And look, people that are homosexual and lesbians that are in this lifestyle. Have been molested. But they won't tell you that stuff. See, they, what they try to do, they try to suppress the truth. They try to suppress the truth to make it seem like what they're doing is okay. What they're doing in their lifestyle is okay. And they can't change it because they were born that way. So when people come out of that lifestyle that have openly, they've been all over YouTube, everything. You see former homosexuals, former transgender, former, you know, lesbians that come out of that lifestyle and talk about how God delivered them, how Jesus Christ saved them. That exposes the whole entire LGBT lifestyle. It exposes it, but they don't you don't see them on a news medium. You don't see them, you know, on, on, on these uh, secular talk shows giving their testimony because the world doesn't want to hear that. The world wants people to be to stay in bondage and people like that young guy. He's being used as an instrument of the devil to keep people in bondage because he suppresses the truth. He suppresses the truth. He won't say anything about first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. They won't teach anything about Romans chapter one. And so and the reason why this stuff like that, uh, uh, somebody that they try to have, you know, they got their own queer James Bible, by the way which is another lie. Isn't it something how they never make the, 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 the queer Quran or the queer, you know, Hindu book or anything like that? No, they go. The devil goes after the word of God. He tries to discredit the word of God and he uses his ministers of his like this guy to spew out things and say stuff to try to cater to the emotions of people because, excuse me, my goodness, to cater to the emotions of people because when you when you uh, uh, stir somebody's emotions, you can easily deceive them. But the people that have the Holy Spirit, they're going to see right through this man's lies. And that's what it is. He's a liar. He's a deceiver and he's a seducer and he's under a seducing demon spirit. And now because he can go, you know, people can go on there. The TikTok is dangerous. Because you got a lot of people on TikTok spewing things out like that. It can be very dangerous. But to hear somebody say that Jesus Christ was has, has was, was had had a bigotry in him and was prejudiced and had to repent is utter blasphemy. 
It's, it's blasphemy. When you see that the word of God specifically says that Jesus Christ knew no sin. He was a perfect lamb. He died for sinners. He died so that the world through him might be saved. All right. He's the righteousness of God. He's the fullness of God. He's a fullness of the God here. He's a fullness, full manifestation of God. So if Jesus had to repent, that means God had to repent. That means the Holy Spirit was wrong. Because remember, Jesus Christ, when he was baptized, it says the spirit of God came on him like a dove. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. And Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. He was led and used by the Holy Spirit in all the things that he did. He said, I only do what I see my father doing. I only speak what my father says. So when Jesus came in contact with that woman, he spoke the truth. All right. And he set the woman free because of her faith in him. That's what got her set free. That's what got her daughter set free because she saw from afar who Jesus Christ was and begin to believe on him. And that's where you start seeing how Jesus was really, you know, strong and, 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 and talking to the Jews and, and correcting them and stuff, cursing the fig tree, which was symbolic of, 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 of the Jews of that nature of, of that time, how they would receive the things of the kingdom of God and reject it and all this other stuff. And, and he said, look here, there are other sheep of this fold that I must go and get talking about the Gentiles and everything, but, but anything, but excuse me, anyway, what Jesus Christ was doing was showing because of this woman's faith in him. He was able to uh, he, he, he was able to heal her daughter because it, it matter of fact, it was because of the lack of faith in certain cities. He couldn't do certain miracles because of the people's unbelief. But this woman believed. All right. Her persistency and belief. Jesus didn't have to repent. Jesus didn't have to, you know, uh, uh, Jesus didn't have any prejudice in him. I mean, that, some of them claims that this guy is making, it was just, it's, it's just so ridiculous. This is, I mean, kids know this in Sunday school. You know, kids know, children know about this stuff in Sunday school, knowing that Jesus Christ was sinless. He was perfect. You can, even while I'm talking, you certain scriptures of Jesus Christ come up to your mind and you see right through this man's foolishness. But my thing is this, this is the kind of stuff that because certain people who have the platforms the big ministries and stuff, they don't confront, don't address. This is the kind of stuff that's able to creep into congregations, able to creep in because you got homosexuals, lesbians on your praise team and your congregation and stuff. Now they got somebody that has a huge following possibly on TikTok and, and everything affirming them. All right. Validating them because they're being used in the church after all. So now. You can't say a pastor can't be gay because you got them all in the churches anyway. You got them all on the praise team in the youth in the youth group. You got them in the congregations and everything. And and the leader is not speaking against that lifestyle, challenging people to repentance. No, they give them a platform. So now when somebody like this comes along and starts saying this stuff, and people are just like, oh my goodness, where in the world does this come from? Well, because a lot of the stuff is taking place in ministries and pastors are not, you know, bold enough to speak up against it and, 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 and sit people down that are in that lifestyle. Instead of just wanting to have somebody on your on your keyboard or the organ or on the praise team, you you rather have their musical, you know, ability or, or talent that they have, but you don't care anything about where their soul is headed because you allow them to stay up on the stage or up in the pulpit getting applause of people. They, they, they want that. They want that affirmation from people, the celebration from people, because they feel like if they've been celebrated by people, then God must be using them because music has made people in the audience cry their ability to play. They know how to sing, you know, uh, 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 uh songs and, and put an interject God's name and everything. And, and people get moved with emotion. And so you have a person that's in that lifestyle of homosexuality and lesbianism up on the praise team or 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 come across a pulpit teaching and everything like that. And they're deceiving folks, but they're able to move them with their musical ability. It's not the anointing because the anointing of God does not flow through perversion. And so now you have somebody that comes out 
this young guy comes out with a priest collar on and everything, saying all this stuff to twist things, and then accuses Christians of being the problem if you speak that homosexuality is a sin. Well, I got news for you. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and homosexuality is a sin. And so that does not mean that leads to somebody getting gunned down. So when somebody's in a homosexual lifestyle and they get AIDS, do you ever tell people, hey, if you're living in that lifestyle, you can get AIDS. You can get this, this, this prostate issue going on in your body if you live in that lifestyle. That's the result of homosexuality. No, they won't tell you that. They won't tell you the, the, the diseases and everything that's happening in life, the, their life expectancy being cut short. They won't tell you stuff like that. The devil is not going to give you the full story. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. His ministers are liars like this young man, that he is a liar. He's not going to tell you the full story of what's going on in that whole LGBTQ, elemental P lifestyle. As a matter of fact, LGBT means let God be true and every man a liar. That's what this guy is doing. All right, we're going to flip it around again. The LGBT means that. Let God be true. But anyway, just want to kind of uh, share that and share the, the, the scriptures. Uh, uh, those are two key scriptures to, to point out. And people want to say, well, Jesus never spoke against homosexuality. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and the Father are all one and are all in agreement. The Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ never spoke against each other, never contradicted each other. The Spirit of God that filled Jesus Christ, that was on Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God that inspired the entire Bible, that where you constantly see homosexuality and lesbianism being an abomination in the Old Testament, there was warnings about it and God condemned it. He condemned the practices of it. God did not change his mind in the New Testament. He had the same stance. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There will not be one homosexual Christian, well, so-called homosexual Christian in heaven. It's a deception and it's a lie from the pit of hell. And it's a seducing spirit. Because being in that lifestyle, you can't live holy. You can't live right nor do you have the spirit of God. You must be born again and you must depart from that lifestyle, from all that perversion. It is an abomination. It specifically says in the Old Testament, man shall not lay with man like he lays with a woman. All who do so are an abomination. We read Romans chapter one. All who do such things are worthy of death. Not only do those things, but they approve and encourage others to do those things. Becoming wise, they became fools. And God handed them over to their own lusts and desires. Where they began to have men lie with men. Women lie with women. Why? Because of their own lusts and desires. And they became foolish. See, uh, this whole lifestyle, that homosexuality and lesbianism stuff. That comes from false god worship. Temple prostitutes of Baal. That's how they worship, was getting involved in sexual immorality, sexual acts. Okay? It was disgusting. And what it does is that it completely stops the flow of creation. Because if everybody was homosexual or if everybody was lesbian, you wouldn't have any more children. You wouldn't have any more children in the earth. You would, if, every, if every dog was gay, was only attracted to male dogs, you wouldn't have any puppies. This is why the Lord says that the that the that the animals will reproduce after their own kind, male and female animals. That's why they brought them on the ark two at a time, male and female. What did God do in the beginning? Male and female, He created. He created them. So how in the world can anybody in that lifestyle? And I challenge anyone in that lifestyle. Listen, repent, because if you think that you're going to live any kind of way. And ignore what the word of God says about this matter. You're deceiving yourself. You have to come to Christ. Whatever the struggle is in your heart. Whatever it is in your life. Whatever traumatic experience you went through. 
quit connecting with people that's going to continue to feed you the lie. You have to ask Jesus Christ, Lord, I am struggling in this area. I need your deliverance. I need your deliverance. I see what the scripture says. I need your deliverance. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I say this to anybody that's in that lifestyle. That's a liar. That's a whoremonger. That's an adulterer. That's a fornicator. That's a cusser. I say this to anybody. If you are in that lifestyle, call on Jesus Christ and he will set you free. You must desire to be set free. That means you got to start changing what you watch, what you're listening to and who you're hanging around. You're going to have to come out of that group of, of homosexuals, lesbians, cussers, idolaters, whatever. You're going to have to come out of the midst of them. That's what the word of God says. Come out from amongst them and be separate. You have to allow the word of God to cleanse you. So you see that there's hope for those that are that have been in that lifestyle because they came out of it. You have multitudes of people that are born again now that talk about how they came out of that lifestyle. How they came out of it, how the Lord dis de delivered them and set them free. Then they tell the truth about how they got in it. And it's usually because of molestation, because of being rejected by their father, being rejected by their mother. See, all this stuff that happens when people are leaving babies in these little, you know, at the, the little boxes at the firehouse and everything or 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 people thinking about aborting their child and everything that sets up a spirit of rejection in that child. And that's why they start struggling with certain things, because there's a deficit there. Because parents are like a hedge of protection for that child. But when that hedge is broken, the Bible says when the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. So I'm, I'm sharing this because this type of deception and seduction and lying is only going to increase in this hour. And because people reject sound doctrine. They'll follow after it. They'll follow, they'll, they'll follow along with it. And all the person got to do is play some nice, you know, sympathetic music and, and have an emotional plea. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he just, he just loves you. He just, he, he, even Jesus Christ himself, they know how to speak real eloquently. They know how to speak in a way that is not offensive to anybody because offensiveness, you know, to offend somebody is a sin in their eyes. If somebody is offended by what you're saying, then that means you're wrong for saying it. And that's a lie. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, blessed is he who's not offended in me. By him being the truth, by doing what he's doing, he said, blessed is the person who's not offended by it. But unfortunately, people are offended by it. They're offended by the Bible because the Bible exposes what's in their heart. The word of God exposes what is truly in their heart. And because they don't want to humble themselves and repent and come to the Lord, they rather get offended and they lash out at the messengers. We have seen it all throughout the Bible. You see what happened to the apostles, how they were beaten. You see what happened to Stephen, how he was beaten. Why? Because the word of God and speaking on Jesus Christ and who he is, is a stumbling block to the unbelievers. And it exposes their hearts to where they become angry and full of rage. So in actuality, it is those in that lifestyle, that LGBT lifestyle, whatever, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. They hate what the word of God says about them. They hate what the Holy Spirit emphasizes about their lifestyle. Rather than humbling some of them, humbling themselves to come to Jesus Christ and repent. And confess their sins and repent and ask for the Lord to, to deliver them. No, they want to keep in that lifestyle. They want Christianity on their terms, but they don't want to conform to the terms of Jesus Christ, to the terms of the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So we see these things. That's why you ever see a Person out here walking around, you know, lesbian, homosexual, confessing Christ. You ever see them heal anybody? You ever see them cast demons out of anybody? You ever see them do anything, have a gift of discernment, a gift of prophecy? You ever see them doing operating in these gifts? No, because it doesn't operate in profane and, and it, it does not operate in perverse lifestyles. Now, they may lie and say they prophesy when they prophesy lying. 
Now they may act like they laying hands because we we seen that with with Tyler Perry and all this other stuff. They act like they know how to put on a form of godliness, but they don't have the spirit of God. So that means that they're not of His. Jesus said, "These signs shall follow them that believe. In My name they will cast out devils. They will heal the sick. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. People in their lifestyle, they cannot." manifest this stuff they cannot manifest what jesus christ said because they don't believe they will say things about jesus christ and about god but they'll twist the scriptures they will not give you the full counsel of god they can't because they don't even believe it because they're not living it that's why the word of god is very clear be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself so they cannot even walk according to the word of god nor be led by the spirit because they're walking in their own lust and desires. And so when we see things like this, people, and this guy tries to say that Jesus Christ, you 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 know the truth by his fruits. That's not what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ said you will know a tree by his fruits. And so that tree of perverse living, you know by his fruits because it's a lie. It's a lifestyle full of lies. A man attracted to other men or a woman attracted to other women, other women is a lie. So the fruit of that LGBTQ transgender lifestyle, it is full of lies because it goes completely against the word of God. It goes completely who God created that man or that woman to be. And it goes completely against God's order of reproduction in the earth because two men can't reproduce anything. Two women can't reproduce anything. They cannot produce after their own kind. You need a man and a woman. That's the way it's been in all creation. Insects know that. Animals know that. Monkeys know that. Whoever. They all know that. But unfortunately, human beings think they know better. Some human beings think they know better than God and want to go against it. That's why they can't, they can't, they can't tell the truth. If their lifestyle is a lie, a man that doesn't like men, but wants a, a man that acts like a woman, is confused. Just like a woman who doesn't like, who doesn't want a man, but wants a woman that acts like a man. They're confused. There's the things, you know, psychologically, you know, even often, of course, this is an evil spirit and that's what it is. And so things like this, people are what's popping up now. And unfortunately, because certain people won't speak out against it, they're sitting up here, you know, voting for, for, for political parties that or political candidates that support this stuff to increase it. Now it's being taught to the children. Now it's being taught to the schools to go after the children, to seduce the children. Now it's being put up all up on cartoon networks and and commercials notice that they're putting more and more perverted people on these commercials and this is and, and, and then people want to say well you you're big at everything I'm like i don't care what you what you call me i'm saying exactly what the word of god says and it ain't me you got an issue with it's the bible that you have an issue with i'm repeating exactly what the word of god says about this lifestyle because if somebody truly loves and cares about your soul they're going to tell you the truth just like a doctor, if he didn't tell certain people that they had a disease operating in their bodies, does it mean that he loves them for because he, he would not tell them the truth? And he said, oh, your, 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 your charts look good. Your cholesterol levels are fine. Everything is fine. Go ahead. You know, I don't want to. I'm not going to tell them that, you know, that they, they only got two months to live. I'm not going to tell them anything like that because I don't want them to accuse me of being, you know, a, a doctor death or being, you know, Dr. Kevorkian or something like that. I don't want them to accuse me of doing that stuff. So I'm just going to tell them what they want to hear. That's not true love. That's not true. That's not true uh, care and concern for your neighbor. You tell them the truth. Because when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But when you're covering that up with lies, you're trying to suppress the truth. And trying to live a lifestyle of lies, then you're going to follow the follow the father of lies straight to the lake of fire, and that's what this guy is leading people. It's in the word. It's in the word.